Hello, and welcome to the Signal 4 onboarding series. Previously in the series, we've gone over creating a new Signal 4 account, inviting users, creating teams on this account, placing these users into the teams, creating an endpoint to receive events from your third party systems, then how we can use distribution rules to create alerts from these events targeted to specific teams by the criteria in the events. So now that we're creating alerts, the next step is how can we ensure that our users receive these alerts? And this is what we're going to go over today. How we can make sure that your users receive these alerts via the notification channels we have included inside of Signal 4 and what they can do with the alert once they've received it. So the first thing we want to do is by default, your users are going to be notified via a push notification to the phone that they have installed and logged into the Signal 4 mobile app on. However, we also offer the ability for your users to be notified via an SMS and or voice call channel. But in order for those channels to be activated, we first have to validate our phone number that we wish to receive the SMS and or voice call to. So we can actually do this via the web portal and or the mobile app. And on the web portal, this is done by clicking on your name, click on the My Profile option, and then clicking on the signaling tab to pull this down and we'll then see the voice and text channels with a link for validating slash verifying that phone number. And in the mobile app, we can do this by clicking on the settings cog and then clicking on the profile option. And inside of here, we can then enter in our phone number to validate a phone number here as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and validate my phone number via the mobile app today. And I do this by typing in my phone number and then clicking on the checkbox. And this is going to send me new validation code via a text message here. And I can then go ahead and go back and enter this number in. And that's going to validate my phone number. Now, if I go over here to the web portal and refresh this screen, we'll now see that the phone number is shows and it is validated for those channels. So now we can receive alerts via all three channels in the pattern that we wish to have set as a user. And this notification pattern here can be set again via either the mobile app or the web portal. And in the mobile app, if I go back one screen and then click on the signaling menu option, we'll see our notification pattern is saved here in the mobile app. So now let's go ahead and set this. And the way I want my notification pattern to work is I would like my SMS to come instantly, my voice to come after one minute after that, and then my push notification to come one minute after the voice for a total of two minutes after the initial alert. So I can go ahead and save that. And then once the notification pattern is set, this will refresh to the mobile app and we'll actually see the notification pattern set there as well. So now that we've picked how we want to be notified, now let's actually see this notification in action. So in, for my purposes, I'm gonna go back to my signaling tab in the web portal and back to the home page of the mobile app. And I'm gonna go quickly send in a new alert that we'll actually see arrive in both the mobile app and the web portal. So they received it in our mobile app. And if I scroll down to the text messages, we'll actually see I got a new text message from Signal 4 for this newly created alert. And if I go ahead and open that text message up, we'll see the information that is included in the alert inside of this text message. So if I go back over here and I go ahead and click on my alerts, we will see my brand new alert. And if I click on it to open it, we will see the information. We'll see that it was sent to the support team and then the title of the event, as well as the body of the text of the event. And if I scroll down, we have under the details, this includes all the parameters that were sent inside of the event and how they're included inside of the alert. And now because a minute has passed, we'll see Signal 4 is now calling me using the second step of my notification profile to let me know that there's a new alert. And at any point in time, if I want to stop my notification channels, I can do that by acknowledging the alert. And this can be done inside of both the web portal and the mobile app again by clicking on the acknowledge button in the web portal or clicking on the act button in the mobile app or clicking on the question mark circle at the top. So if I click on the act button, or the question mark, it's going to go ahead and acknowledge the alert. And we'll see that the circle button, the question mark is gone. And now my user icon is up there. And if I scroll down a little bit, 
we'll see that under the responses, I now have an acknowledgement, and it also tells me how long it was before I acknowledged. And if I scroll further down to the bottom, we'll actually see the timeline of this alert. So we'll see when the alert was raised, and then in this case, the only other thing we've added so far is that I've acknowledged the alert, so that shows up here in the timeline as well. And on the web portal, we'll actually show the acknowledgement here as well, in addition to what time it was acknowledged and exactly how long the alert was open before the acknowledgement was added. So next up, what we have down here is we actually, you'll see we have a chat and annotations box towards the bottom right above the timeline. And what this allows me to do is enter in information so I can talk to the other users on my team to let them know what I'm doing with this alert. And as we can see here, and I did add a second one because I misspelled the first one, um, letting people know that I am working on this alert and it shows you when it was added and by what user. In my case, it was both my user, but at two different times by roughly 30 seconds. And these will also show over here in the web portal, if I scroll down, we'll see the annotation show here as well. Now that I've added an annotation, let me scroll back up to the top of my alert and we'll see here that now I have the other options here and I can again I can close this alert by clicking on the close button in either the web portal or the mobile app or again by clicking on my user icon in the top the big circle so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna close this via the web portal and we'll actually see this closure move over to the mobile app and we can tell by the fact that the color has now gone gray letting us know that it's been closed and I now have the reopen button instead of the close button let me know that the ticket's been closed and I can reopen it if needed. And if I scroll down a little bit more under responses, we now have a closed event and it tells me roughly how long from the moment the ticket was opened until it was closed. And if I scroll further down back into the timeline, we'll now see the closed event there as well. Now, if you accidentally close the alert at any point in time, you can then reopen it by clicking on the reopen button inside the mobile app or the undo close link that you would see next to the closed event in the web portal, like we see here for the acknowledgement. And now if I scroll back down again, we'll again see this event added to the timeline showing that it was reopened. Now, we also have the ability inside of the alert in the mobile app to manually escalate this alert. So if I'm on support and this issue I know is ends up being too big for us, I can go ahead and escalate this alert over to my IT ops team to inform them that I'm gonna need their help to work on this so that they can actually work on it through the Signal 4 app. And this is going to create an entirely new alert, as we can see here, with all the same information in it. So the same text and title, as well as the parameters. And we'll actually see that it shows you the escalation path inside of the new alert, as well as the old alert will now show this as well. And we'll see here that the signal was raised as an escalation from the support team. And if I go back to my original alert, we now show the escalation there in addition to the acknowledged and closed events. So we also have the ability for your users to share this alert to anybody outside of Signal 4 via outside channels. So I can send a quick SMS with this alert information or an email or even a Teams message to another user with the information from this alert so I can use this to receive help from a user outside of Signal 4 if needed. The next button here is the chat button, and this brings me back down to my chat and annotations, allowing me to insert a note if needed that would appear in both the web portal and the mobile apps for my users. And then our last button here is the react button, and this is not something we're gonna get into today, but this allows you to do what we call remote actions, which is a set number of actions predefined that you can launch manually through the ticket to do anything from restart a service or even restart an entire machine via just one button click. And that's how your users would receive an alert and then what they can do with the alert inside of the mobile app and or the web portal from Signal 4. Thank you and have a nice day. Goodbye.